Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. So this pick a card reading is about your hidden strength versus weaknesses. And we have three pals to select from group number one, black egg, number two, starfish, number three, is fox energy so pause the video if you have to to see which group you're resonating with the timestamps are always in the description box below let's jump into the reading hello group number one so you guys selected the black egg and this is all about your hidden strength versus weaknesses versus areas of improvement and with the black egg energy immediately when it comes to this group you guys are probably the type of people that are filled with ideas an abundant of ideas like idea like and some of you probably have like amazing ideas to the point where it's like you thought of something and years later you see someone else invent it or you see it on the world stage and you're like damn i thought of that and it's always having that moment of i thought of that i thought of that you're probably always telling the people you love or people around that i thought of that like i thought of that idea i thought of this invention you know having so many great ideas but when it comes to say weaknesses I'm getting something about like turning over the engine. It's like when a car has a starter issue where it's like you turn the key and you hear the click, but there's no roar, the engine isn't, you know, turning over. So when it comes to this group, maybe your weakness is your ability to put something in motion, your ability to take action. So it's like you have amazing ideas, but to me, execution might be it for a lot of you who selected the black egg also to when it comes to your hidden strength is your ability to see in the dark when i say see in the dark in the sense that the same way you're able to tap into the universe and pull through a great idea is the same way you're able to tap into uh the the, the universe and see something that's going to happen see something that's coming but i'm getting something about not being able to synchronize it enough to capitalize on it if that makes sense let me explain so i remember and this happens even now but like i remember when i was in the salon um while i would be getting ready to go to work i'll have like a flash that it feels like a flash but it's almost like a quick vision that lasts as long as a flash of an interaction that i might be having so as quick as i could snap my finger just that quick a scenario will kind of download and and kind of like flicker across the screen of my mind and i'll see i'll see an interaction that's going to happen between me and a client per se and that flicker that visual is giving me an opportunity to have the upper hand of the situation because i already see the outcome so i have an opportunity to change the outcome based on how I respond. And that happens to me even in my dreams where it's like I might meet someone and I dream about them and I see us getting into it. And you know, if I don't do anything in real life, it'll happen just the same. Where it's like I might see that in my dream and just from the dream alone, I'm able to understand certain things about our dynamic and I'm able to either avoid the situation completely or 
tread carefully, tread lightly. Where with you guys, I get the feeling that you might overlook your intuition and premonition or you don't take it as serious until after. And you're always finding yourself saying, if I, I, I knew, oh my God, I knew. And you're telling people how much you knew and don't nobody give a damn like if you knew, then if you know better then do better, if you do, then do something about it. I get where you're coming from, but like you got to get to the point where it's like you sink both realities. And trust me, it took me some time. It took me some time to be able to get there. So I know it's, 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 it's easier said than done. But to me, it's a situation where it's like you burn your hand on the stove so many times to realize that the stove is hot, to start paying attention when you feel heat. So for me, it's like waking up from certain dreams and within the dream, like, you know, I wake up and feeling myself feeling a type of way. And from the feeling that I got from the dream, automatically it has my attention or the vision that crossed my mind before I interact with the person, you know, automatically that just has my attention because, you know, I've had so many experiences to the point where it's like, okay, I'm not going to overlook them. So I get for you guys, your weakness is you overlooking them, or if only you would take them seriously. But then to me, I feel like it goes all around in the sense that the same way you don't take your great ideas seriously, the same way you don't act on your ideas is the same way how you dismiss your premonition and intuition. So really, it's the same thing happening through all our lives. And it brings me back to this saying where they say the way you do one thing is the way how you do everything. And that didn't click for me until I was learning how to trade where I realized that my impulsive nature and certain things about me were showing up, but for the first time, like the consequences was me losing money because of these behaviors. So they really got my damn attention where before, you know, I could easily overlook. And as humans, we tend to justify and point the finger where I couldn't justify and point the finger. I mean, I could have, I could blame it on the market. But then how am I going to become successful if I don't become if I don't take accountability? You know what I mean? So that's what I'm getting so far when it comes to this group, when it comes to your hidden strength versus your weaknesses. And I feel like your strength is one a powerful one to have because I just did the reading for Patreon and I did the same kind of reading. Um, for Patreon also, and there's a group that kind of remind me of this one, but with this group, like this energy feels more intense, where the other one that remind me of this felt more like someone who is just very lucky, where it's like, you know, things just go their way. It's that saying, God, take care of fools and babies. And it's like, they must be a fool or a baby because things just work. Where with this group, you guys have very intense premonition and spiritual guidance you know, there's just this strong, intense knowing where you go to sleep and you have a dream. Like say for me, when it comes to dreams, like I remember when certain people would like, you know, you dream certain things about people, you'll tell them. And of course their ego might want, make them like, um, gaslight you because it's like, who do you think you are to be in their business in your dream? And after a while, I grew to just trust myself and not look for people to validate my dreams. And I get when it comes to this group, you guys just need to learn to trust yourself. So this fell out and went to the side. Um, and when it comes to your strength, the Knight of Swords in the reversal position. So this brings me to a strength, meaning like your ability to reflect. So your reflection is a strength. But when it comes to this group, I feel like you reflect so much that you don't do anything. So it could be a strength, but at the same time, it's like you reflect so much that you don't do anything. And your weakness is the uh, five of swords in the reversal position. So with the five of swords in a reversal position, when it comes to this group as a weakness, I think of a person, the word cynical is coming to mind. It's like, say you grew up in a household or whatever, where it's like, they're like, oh, everything, anything that sounds too good to be true is probably a scam or this, that, or the next. I feel like when it comes to this group, you guys probably have a very pessimistic outlook on the world and don't even realize that you have a pessimistic outlook on the world or some kind of a negative outlook on the world. And trust me, it's not working for you is what I'm getting with that. Also too, when it comes to your strength, um, we have Aries, the number nine and the sun. So with, when it comes to the strength, again, your ability to educate your, yourself and learn new things. Also to you guys have a strong will, but at the same time, probably struggle when it comes to taking action. And also to with the sun energy there, 
you guys have a lot to teach you guys have a lot to learn but again like i said um you know it's like you have all these great ideas but you know you're not acting on any of them you're keeping them to yourself so this card here is how to tap into your strength and when it comes to say tapping into your strength and having that card there the nine of wands in the reversal position in the reversal position that person is hella paranoid and i feel like the way how that would help me to tap into my strength in the sense that for me i don't ever want to get to the point where i'm out of time meaning that you know i'm an older elderly lady and you know i've gotten to the point where i'm just waiting for my bus to come to go to the next destination you get where i'm trying to say so it's like when i get to that point all i got is my memories i want to be able to sit back and smile about the good old days and smile at the fact that i did not miss a beat smile at the fact that like whatever my intuition told me to do i did it smile at the fact that i did not waste a second i waste no time so with this energy here to me how to tap into your strength to me i would i would if i was you guys i would tell myself i don't want to i don't want to have regret and i feel like at the way the way you guys are operating you just might end up with regret you might end up with regret in the sense that time is moving and you're not taking action and i feel like take action it's better to take action and something didn't work and you learn something from it and then do something else opposed to just allowing yourself to be still and when it comes to say back to weaknesses the number two energy here your ability to nurture something so to me nurturing something as a weakness is you know not putting something in motion number one inability to observe something and observe what something needs to take it to the next level so also too with this group i get that you guys probably are bad nurturers of yourself and a lot of the times i can tell when i look at someone's natal chart that that is the case whenever someone has the number two in the blind spot position and that's by you adding up the numbers in your birth year and your day together and if they add up and reduce the number two if you get 11 it's a two you know then it's someone that struggles when it comes to nurturing themselves and also others so you might feel like others are ungrateful but it's like you didn't even pay attention to see what they really like instead you bought them a gift that would be a great idea but not a great idea for them and then also too with sag energy your ability to be diverse expose yourself to other things and take chances and then when it comes to say venus energy as a weakness to me i think of libra energy and having a hard time straddling the fence to the point that you don't make a decision but when we get back over here so this is how to tap into your strength and like i said tap into your strength by telling yourself like and, and for me that's what i do tap into my strength by i don't want to get to the point in my life where i'm left with any regrets i rather try something and new and create experience from trying it than wondering and being left with regret feeling bitter i see how some people get older and they're jealous of the younger generation because they didn't live their life like i don't want that to be me i want to be able to celebrate everyone and every generation and encourage them because i am living my life to the fullest and when it comes to how to overcome your weaknesses the ace of pentacle is here so ace of pentacles pentacles deals with practical energy so to me with you guys you guys need some kind of a step-by-step -step plan and being very practical and grounded with your step-by-step -step plan and that's something that i had to do until i developed my routine and so that might mean okay what are you trying to create you might want to start a new business or start a new thing so it's like you start with the end in mind and you write a step-by-step -step process on things that you need to accomplish or do in order to make it happen or a routine that you need to have in order to make it happen and follow it consistently and that is how you overcome this weakness that you have because with you guys being so intuitive and well connected to the spirit world imagine if you had a step-by-step -step process that you were you were working on so to me this is like you planting a seed and nurturing it but then also with your ability your strength and the universe communicating with you the way it does imagine how this thing the exponential growth this thing can have because you're being guided every step of the way the universe is showing you what to implement so you will never run into any roadblocks and if you do it's really just the universe directing your steps and not what you think it is while group number one your message is extremely 
powerful and it was such a pleasure sharing it with you. If you'd like to book a tarot card reading with me or a natal chart awareness coaching session, the link for that is in the description box below. Also, if you enjoy my pick a card readings, you can check them out weekly. I drop new ones weekly on Patreon and the link for that is also in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey group number two, you guys selected the starfish energy and this is about your hidden strength versus weaknesses. So when it comes to say strength on a whole, the five points on the starfish brings me to the number five in numerology which deals with sudden and unexpected changes. Uh, just like how the, the starfish energy deals with water elements. So you guys are very intuitive, but also too, when it comes to strength for a lot of you is your uh, telepathic ability. I get when it comes to this group, a lot of you might find that you don't like silence or you're, you constantly have something going, meaning you might be washing the dishes and having a YouTube video running in the background and just feeling like you need to have something going in order to do stuff because you're very you're very telepathic and you know you're always picking up messages you're always picking up messages you're always hearing um things and when i say hear things i don't mean like you know voices in the head type of vibe but it's like you're a channel you're a very clear channel and also to with the starfish as a spirit animal you know the starfish energy brings me to the ocean and the waves in the ocean and how the waves in the ocean carries the starfish so it's like when it comes to your strength your ability to listen to your intuition and allow your intuition to carry you wherever it is that you need to go and also to your strength is the fact that like okay so I remember when I would watch certain spiritual channels and they'll talk about manifestation, especially like say Abraham Hicks. And she would talk about how, you know, you just need to focus your energy on whatever it is that you want and consistently keep yourself within the vortex and keeping yourself within the vortex is you holding that frequency consistently. And just from you doing that, you don't have to do anything. Whatever it is that you need will find you. You don't even have to do anything. And I remember when I first heard it, I was like, that's bullshit. But then after a while, I realized and see the truth in it, in the sense that with the starfish energy, you know, this is where say you might say that you want love in your life and you realize that, you know, you want love in your life and you now no longer into to entertain any kind of content or conversations where they're speaking negatively about love because you know it is real and you want it. So you use all of your will to consistently focus only on that and not the opposite of that. So from you having that shift within yourself, you keep that energy, you hold on to that energy. So a friend calls you up and invites you to a party and intuitively your intuition um, automatically when you were invited, there was a yes within you before it came out of your mouth. So you said yes. Your friend said, hey, you should ride with me because, you know, it's 30 minutes away and I think we would enjoy each other's company on the ride. So your friend comes and picks you up, takes you to the party. You get to the party. You're there. The party is so, so, you know, you're just chilling on the patio or whatever and just, you know, enjoying the view. And then someone comes out there. You guys start this conversation and before you know it, you know, the party is over and your friend is getting ready to leave. And the person's like, I'll give you a ride home because the conversation between you guys is so good. And it's like, you wanted this thing and the universe brought it to you where you didn't even have to pick up yourself and move yourself to get to it. It, it found its way to you. So when it comes to say your hidden strength versus your weakness, to me with the starfish energy here, it's your ability to attract things into your world. It's to bring things to you or your minimal, like you don't have to put much energy into it. But I feel like when it comes to this group, your strength might also be the same or very similar weakness in the sense that 
the same way how you're able to manifest certain things in your world that you want is the same way how you're probably also manifesting a lot of what you don't want in your world when it comes to this group i'm getting that your hidden strength is your manifesting abilities and your weakness is your attention and where you're focusing it your attention and where you're focusing it in the sense that like i said if you are the person who wants to manifest love then that means you don't get on the internet and entertain these conversations where people are speaking negatively about love. So say you want to attract a husband, you don't get on the internet and watch these videos where they're dogging men out and saying this, that, or the next. You're, you want to attract a wife, you don't get on the internet and entertain these uh, conversation where they're dogging women out. You don't want to hear that because you know that you don't fit in the box of the negativity that they're saying. And, you know, so, you know, the person for you won't fit in that either. You know that we can all live within the same space and exist in different worlds. And those people are existing in that world, but that is not your world and that is not your reality. So you're very conscious and you don't use your will power to control anyone but yourself and you use your willpower to keep redirecting your energy and attention to the things that you want the things that make you strong so i feel like yeah with this group your hidden strength is your manifestation abilities and a lot of the times like i feel like you know when it comes to manifestation abilities i feel like there's always going to be some kind of a strong uh 12th house energy pisces energy neptune energy uh, also, uh, cancer energy, fourth house energy, moon energy. And, you know, we all have these energies within our charts. We all have them within our charts. And it's a matter of us, you know, being dreamy enough to dream and also, yeah, dreamy enough to dream and naive enough to know that it's real. And I don't think it's being naive or not. I'm just saying that. You know, so when it comes to the first card, the first card talks about strength. Second talks about weaknesses. This one talks about how to tap into your strength. This one talks about how to overcome your weaknesses. And when it comes to the first card, your strength, I love your strength card being the eight of swords in the reversal position. Because with the eight of swords in the reversal position, this tells me that you don't allow anything to keep you down for long. Uh, with the eight of swords in a reversal position, I get that you guys are very, uh, you guys are very, uh, strategic is what wanted to come to mind is, is what thought first came to mind, but that's not what I'm looking for. Resourceful. You guys are very resourceful. So your strength is your resourcefulness. So when it comes to you guys, a lot of you guys might be the kind of people where it's like when you're cooking a meal, like you might cook the same meal five times and each time is different because you're going to cook it based on what you have available and you're not afraid to try new things. So your strength is the fact that you are resourceful. Also to your strength is the number 12, 12 house energy, meaning, like I said, your imagination, your imagination actually is a strength. Your intuitive ability is a strength. The South node is here. So with the South node being here, your strength, the South node and Capricorn uh, and Sagittarius energy being here, to me, your strength is your ancestors with the, with the South node energy to me, past life experiences, past life experiences, meaning that maybe you have, you know, you have good karma from the past. They would say, I normally don't say that, but that's what I'm picking up from here where it's like maybe your past efforts, or maybe it doesn't even have to be past lives. It could be say how you started out this life, because I feel like for me, i um, starting out this life. You know, there were times when I was much younger where the creator blessed me to be this person right here. And I happily took on this role and I feel like, and I feel emotional talking about it now, or I feel like the emotions want to come in, but it's like, I feel like I've gotten to a point now where it's like, I've been reaping those benefits in ways that I can't even imagine that I'm not even looking for, but it's happening. But anyways, with the South node, to me, it's like your early actions has been, 
Your early actions is also a strength. And with Sagittarius energy here, your diversity is a strength in the sense that your, your ability to connect with all different kind of people from all walks of life is a strength. So now your weakness is six of pentacles. Your weakness is the fact that like this brings me to the story of the alchemist where, you know, he's promising people parts of his treasure before he gets it. So your weakness might be your generosity or your heart or your ability to take on other people's problems that just don't belong to you. The number five and Leo uh, and the sun energy here, your weakness might be your big heart and feeling sorry for people when you shouldn't. And I say you shouldn't because I feel like the creator loves everyone. So because the creator loves everyone, everybody is on their own path. And sometimes people appear to be suffering or going through things, but that's a part of their path. And to feel sorry for them is to say that the creator doesn't love them. The creator doesn't see them. And I just don't think that's true. So that's where my perspective comes from. And also to a scorpion energy here as a weakness, I get um, control issues, always wanting to be the giver. So you don't allow for others to help you. So like the story that I uh, mentioned earlier, where it's like, you know, that person had to be receptive to, to, to allow their friend to invite them to the event, receptive enough to allow their friend to come and get them and bring them receptive enough to allow this person that they had this amazing conversation with to you know take them home where with this energy here i feel someone who needs to always be in control and when we need to be in control we miss out on a lot and that clicked for me one day when someone invited me to a park and they seemed like they were undecided about um the time we should go to the park because they wanted to get there when there was a shade when the sun wasn't so bright out and at first I felt myself wanting to just step in and recommend a park that I'm familiar with, with a whole lot of shade. But then at that time in my life, I was practicing, uh, stepping more into my feminine energy and being more receptive. And instead I just said, nope, let them figure it out. Just wait until they get back to you. And I went to the park to meet them. And that park ended up being like my second favorite park where if I had just forced my way and be assertive the way how I am, I would have never been introduced to that park or had that opportunity. So that's something that I'm getting when it comes to you guys. And when it comes to say how to tap into your strength, how to tap into your strength with the devil energy here to me talks about like a level of consistency, a level of consistency and dedication is necessary when it comes to tapping into your strength because when it comes to this group i'm getting that there might be a major fear around a major fear around commitment like there might be commitment issues where the thought of commitment might feel like you know the devil sitting you know someone having power and control over you and i feel like it doesn't have to be that way and and a way how to not make it that way is to first be clear about what is acceptable for you what is unacceptable and then from being clear about what works for you and what doesn't you 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 lead with those boundaries and boundaries in the sense that it's like uh-huh uh-uh uh-huh uh-uh uh-huh uh-uh and your boundaries might change over time as you get comfortable in a situation or with a person. But from jump, being clear and consistent is very important. And when it comes to say how, how to overcome weaknesses, we have the four of pentacles in the reversal position. And to me, when it comes to say oh, how to overcome weaknesses with the four of pentacles in the reversal position, it just brings me to surrendering and just trusting. Surrendering and trusting is how you overcome is how you overcome it on a whole um, surrender and trusting, but just overall being consistent when it comes to this group, because like I said, you guys are very powerful when it comes to attracting to you and bringing to you whatever it is that you want. And when it comes to this group, I also get the feeling of someone afraid of losing. So maybe some hoarding might be a thing. And when it comes to say, you know, uh, how to overcome this energy is being okay with losing because you know that you will always have more being okay with people and things coming and going because you know there will always be more you know that experiences are always coming in and out of your world and you know that the universe wants to express and experience itself through you so for that the universe wants you to be abundant because it gives the universe more options so because of that when things you know be open and 
allowing of the ebbs and flows that come in and out of your life and knowing that you know that's just a part of it group number two this was a pleasure was a pleasure for sure if you would like to book a tarot reading with me or a natal chart awareness coaching session the link for that is in the description box below also if you enjoy my pick a card readings and would like to have access to weekly pick a card readings please uh, check out the link in the description for my Patreon. That's where you can have access to exclusive pick a card readings just for Patreon. And I share new ones weekly. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me an orange card. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a orange heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Love yourself as if your life depended on it, because it does. Take care of yourself, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number three. So group number three, you guys selected the Fox energy, and this is about your strength, your hidden strength versus your weaknesses. So when it comes to this group, you guys remind me of Palace big time. So Palace is an asteroid in astrology and wherever palace is in your natal chart it talks about your ability to negotiate your ability to solve a problem in a way that doesn't create any kind of conflict and palace in mythology is mars's sister so you know mars is the god of war you know mars is very direct mars is aggressive mars is forceful but what palace palace is the opposite of that that's where we use feminine energy to solve problems so whether you're a man a woman you know this energy brings me to a uh, very palace palace athena feminine energy in the sense that very strategic and you know how to get your way without even letting the other person know that you got your way. This brings me to a conversation that I was having with my cousin yesterday who called me to give me birthday wishes. And he's going to culinary school in New York and they had a challenge where the chef gave everybody the measurements and told everybody to cook rice. And everybody's rice came out soft except his. But he said he didn't follow the chef's measurements because, you know, he saw that when he did the chef's measurement, he saw that there was way too much water in the pot. And I mean, growing up in our households, we used to eat rice almost every day. So like more than likely, like we're going to learn how to cook rice and even learn how to fix it if it gets messed up because you become so skilled at rice cooking in our houses growing up. So when it was all said and done, you know, his rice came out the best. It was perfect. And everybody was so confused because they all followed the ingredients and everybody's rice was soft and soggy, like porridge ish. And the chef came and looked at his and was like, wow, see, I knew it could be done. And me and him are cracking up laughing because he knew the chef's measurements was wrong, but he said, I didn't want to show up the chef. I didn't want to make the chef feel bad by correcting him. So instead he played coy and cooked the rice the way he knew how, but allow the chef to take credit. So there the chef goes saying, see, I knew it could be done, but it wasn't his way. You know, my cousin just knows how to cook rice. So when, you know, certain classmates ask him, you know, outside of the class, how comes your rice was different? He just simply responded, well, I cook rice at work all the time and he just left it there. And I feel like when it comes to you guys, you guys have that very cunning way about you. You have a way about you where you're able to get things done and even influence people. And it seems to them like it's their own free will. It's their own choice but not realizing that you're very influencing because your way of doing things is not aggressive at all. Very passive energy. Like I'm getting with this group, um, strong cancer energy, Libra energy. Um, let me see strong cancer, Libra, Gemini, Virgo, excuse me, even Aquarius energy is what I'm getting because I'm getting also there's this light childlike or youthful way of 
you doing whatever it is that you do. So to me, that is your strength. When it comes to say weakness with the Fox energy here, the weakness that I get when it comes to this group might be say a pessimistic outlook in the sense that you may have developed this way of being in childhood as a form of survival. Like say for whatever reason, you may not have felt safe in your environment. So from that you be, you developed great emotional awareness skills of people. So you develop skills of being able to observe and understand people and make them feel seen in return. It gave you peace. But at the same time, you develop this mindset that it's, it's almost like not trusting, not trusting anyone. Like you don't trust anyone. So to me, that's the weakness. And I feel like, how could that be a weakness? I feel like that could actually be a strength, but I feel like it's a weakness in the sense that like the mindset, you know, your mindset is so focused on that to the point that you only see that. Like, it's like always seeing the glass half empty when it comes to people always seeing the glass half empty when it comes to people. And I feel like that's where, um, it's a weakness because the creator blesses us through others. And you guys have amazing people skills. I feel like you guys, a lot of you will make powerful managers and leaders, managers, leaders, even salespeople. And the reason why I say that is because you have the ability to influence, like this reminds me of, um, really, positive feminine energy in the sense that you have the ability to influence people in a way to where they think they're influencing themselves. So then they don't turn around and resent you because they thought they're the ones who did what they did, not realizing you're the one who moved them. But at the same time, like having strong love for you because you make them feel so strong. You make them feel so seen, but not realizing behind the scenes, you're pulling all the strings is what I'm getting when it comes to this group. So it's like you guys make powerful leaders, managers, just powerful people skills because your level of psychology and understanding people. But the weakness I get for this group is because of the way you see people, you probably have a hard time allowing other people to help you, having other people to support you. You probably don't allow anyone to get close to you and you probably have all right to, because sometimes, the reason why I say maybe not tr like the whole trusting people thing, I'm not telling anyone not to trust, but it's like people don't know themselves. So it's like, how can you trust someone who don't know themselves? Um, that's my thing when it comes to that. So it's like, not that I'm endorsing that way of being, but you know, you know. Um, but anyways, when it comes to the card, this is your strength. So the strength card being the, uh, the queen of cups is so fitting to what I just described. Look at how the queen is looking into the cup. Uh, the queen has very powerful intuitive abilities, feminine nurturing abilities. So where this queen can, you know, look into this cup, know exactly how to open this cup without any kind of force. And I feel like that's you guys and how you deal with people. Moon comes up again, your very intuitive nurturing way, the number eight comes up as a strength. The number eight comes up as a strength to me ties in with the Fox energy and almost like your way of not taking anything personal. So it's like, yeah, you don't trust people, but you don't take anything personal because you're like, people are just people. And then Aries energy, like your individuality, or you really enjoying your own company or being your own individual. This deals with, um, your weakness. When it comes to weakness, we have the, uh, nine of pentacles. So your weakness might be money. You want to be rich. You want to be so rich or have so much money to the point where like you're lonely because I always stress over this person. They have all this money and they have grapes and everything in the background. So they're abundant, but they have no friends. Their friend is this bird who's wearing a matching helmet and the bird probably didn't put that helmet on their head 
you know, that person probably captured the bird and think they're doing something for the bird to feed it and give it all the best things when the bird probably just wants to be free. So to me, your weakness is probably the, um, your, you isolating yourself because Libra energy is here. So relationships, the number two is also nurturing and relationship oriented. And then the North node destiny. So when it comes to your weakness, maybe your ambition is your weakness, not nurturing and building relationships might be a weak, your weakness. You're so focused on career and goals to the point where you're lonely. And for now, you probably don't even notice or care because you're so focused and obsessed on whatever it is that you're trying to achieve in your life. This card here talks about how to tap into your strength. And when it comes to say tapping into your strength, the six of wands in the reversal position to me talks about this disconnecting, disconnecting yourself. And there's another word that I'm looking for, um, detaching, detaching yourself from the outcome of your goals. Detaching yourself from the outcome of your goals will be very beneficial in the sense that I think of like, say with myself, where I'll be so obsessed over my goals to the point that I don't allow myself to go out, socialize and mingle. So it's like detaching myself from my goals and things to where I go out, I socialize and I mingle is how you will tap into your strength by, you know, detaching from your outcome, detaching from your wins and just surrendering in the moment and, and enjoying what the moment brings. Because whenever we're super goal oriented, we're always living in the future because that's where our goal is. So if we're goal oriented, we're always living in the future. By the time we get to our goal, we miss it because we have a new one that's bigger because that's just our nature. So with this energy here, we have to challenge ourselves to tap in the moment so we don't miss any Thing. So we don't miss an amazing friendship or connection or relationship or whatnot. And how to overcome your weakness is with the four of cuffs in the reversal position, you overcome your weakness with gratitude, being a little bit more grateful, realizing how the universe is blessing you and what's coming into your life. And also to overcome weaknesses by saying yes more. Yes, more meaning someone invites you somewhere, just go. As long as you're safe, you know, you're safe and you know that you won't be in danger, say yes more. Like say yes more to invites. Say yes more to connections and interactions. Spend time, you know, if you have time, surrender and have the mindless conversation just for seconds. It won't kill you. Like surrender in the moment because gems will come from it is what I'm getting. Group number three, this was a pleasure. If you'd like to book a tarot reading with me or a natal chart awareness coaching session, the links for that is in the description box below. Also, if you enjoy my pick a card readings and you'd like to check out my weekly exclusive readings only on Patreon, that link is also in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a yellow hearts in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.